I bet some of you didn't think you'd see me on here again. Anyways, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is Courtney, and welcome. I have not said that in so long, and honestly, I have missed it. I didn't think I'd be that like, ooh, when I said it again. <laughs> Anyways, how are you? How have you been? The last four, three months have been a complete roller coaster in my life, and that is why I'm here right now to basically give you a life update about what's been going on so I can get it out there, explain to you guys everything, and then hopefully from this, move on and get back to it because I have a lot. <laughs> so I will put down below, there is a trigger warning. If you do not like the talk of loss, wait until the next video, click that bell and so you'll know when the next one is because this does go into a bit of loss. So yeah, that's the warning now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The last time you seen me and my family was when we were going to the aquarium, I believe, was the last video I posted. In that time, I had scheduled a <laughs> pap smear. And with that pap smear, I was a bit nervous. I don't know why, because I've been getting them for years due to before I had some abnormal cells, they had to get rid of them so it didn't cause cancer. So I am very fluent in going to these procedures um, just to get checked that I don't have cancer or cervical cancer, which I'll say right now, women, make sure you go and get your screenings done because you don't know, you really don't know, it, it could save your life. So I went to the procedure and it's very simple, very uncomfortable <laughs> and right away, the nurse that I had was very off. She's like, hmm, I don't know. She started panicking, which caused me to panic. Like, what is going on? And basically she said she thought she saw something that could be a tumor. So my head's going crazy. I was like, oh great, yeah, just what I need in life right now. I didn't know what to do with myself. I came home crying. I was like, they've seen something. They think it's a tumor, blah, blah, blah. I have to go back for more tests, blah, blah, blah. All the meanwhile, because I'm feeling really sick, at that point, I was really sick, throwing up quite a bit. I was feeling nauseous all the time. I was so tired and cranky and just everything just not good. Because of that, because of having the feeling of that and then her saying that, I was like, oh my God, I've got to, it, it must be, it, it makes sense, but why? So I was panicking a bit. And then about a week later, I also clued in the fact that my Tom did not come to visit at that point. And I was just like, no, no, surely not. And I took a test. And then I took another one. And I took another one. And I just could not believe it because I was pregnant. And all these emotions started coming into me because recently, although I was feeling quite icky in that, I started getting my life together after the boys. I've been trying to work hard. I've been trying to save money. I've been planning these trips. And when people used to ask me, do you want another one so you could try to have a girl? I would say, nah, I'm right. I'm happy with my two boys. But deep down, I kind of wanted to have the third. I don't know, it's just three always stood out to me. So yeah, I was pregnant. <laughs> I told Kai, his reaction was like, oh. And then that was it. We talked, we got really excited. We also <laughs> freaked out because I had this screening done and she didn't test me to see if I was pregnant, which usually you do. So she's been up there and that, so I started freaking out. I called the midwife, I'm like, oh my God, this has happened. And I just found I'm pregnant. Could this hurt the baby? Oh, la, 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 la. So I paid money to go see a private place that scans you to see how the baby is after six weeks. And <laughs> I just was so nervous. I did not want anything to happen to this precious little thing inside me. I had the day before my scan, a midwife appointment, and we went through everything. We went through my bloods. We talked about the baby. And so the Sunday comes along and we go and take the boys. We told them we have a little surprise to show you because at this point they don't know. They don't know at all. So we go to the place. The boys have no idea, even though there's babies everywhere. <laughs> and we waited and we got called into the exam room, went through what she was gonna do and started scanning. And all of a sudden, there they were. 
this tiny, tiny little, just little seed, you could call it, a tadpole, a, just very tiny. The technician lady asked the boys, do you know what that is in mommy's tummy? Blake's like, candy, <laughs> food. It's like, yeah, but what else could be in mommy's tummy? And they went through absolutely everything <laughs> other than baby, and then it finally clicked them. They were just swimming around, a strong heartbeat. It was a really nice day because now the boys knew and we got to make sure that they were okay and yeah so fast forward both boys are in school and we got finally our 12 week scan that came through to say when we were gonna go in and it just so happens the same day that we had our scan Aladdin was coming out in theaters and so Kai booked the day off completely. We dropped the kids off at school and we went to go see Aladdin and we have not watched a movie together in years before the kids were born. It was that long. And we made a really nice day out of it and we picked up the boys and then we, we dropped them off at my aunt. We then pulled up to the hospital and as soon as we got into the parking lot, there was just something inside me that kind of switched from excitement. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's just, cause I, I get nervous about these things. I, I don't know why, I just get these really anxious feelings sometimes. And as soon as we got into the parking lot, I was feeling like that. And we started walking and I went a bit quiet and Kai's just going on his merry way. And um, we sit down after giving our paper to say that we were here and we waited. And it seemed like it was quite a long time when in reality it wasn't. I just remember saying to Kai, I'm so nervous. And he's like, oh, there's nothing to be nervous about. You've done this before. You're all right. Everything's all right. Blah, blah, blah. I, I couldn't shake it. I, I was excited to see my baby, but there was that really overwhelming, strong feeling of nervousness. So my name's finally called and um, I lay down on the table and she was like going through everything. And she then um, puts gel on my stomach so cold and put the little thingy dollar <laughs> thingy on my stomach she right away gets to where baby is and you could just see you could see them clear as day tiny she was scanning for quite a bit but as soon as they got to the heart where the heart should have been my heart sank before she even said those three words i knew what seemed like forever, her scanning. She said, I'm sorry, there is no heartbeat. And I said, I know, and I just lost it. Quite immediately, she turned off the screen and, and she said, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. I, I need to run over it, take measurements, do what she needs to do. I thought I'd be okay doing this because I haven't gone through what happened, like saying it when telling friends of him what happened. Sorry, I'm trying to get myself together. When telling friends and family, <laughs> when telling friends and family what happened, it's simple of just, I'm sorry, I lost the baby. I haven't until now gone through that day and said what's gone on that day out loud. It's almost reliving it. And I thought I'd be okay doing this, but from the moment she said those words, I just felt sick and shame and confusion and hate. I'm so upset. Every emotion that you could possibly think of full on negativity just went completely over me. At one point I thought it was numb, but it was just more of a stabbing. Like when you get hit over and over and over again, it's there and it doesn't go away and it doesn't stop. I had what is called a mis miscarriage or also known as a silent miscarriage. There were no signs to say that I lost the baby at any point because what they said the baby measured was I lost the baby with the baby's heartbeat stopped a week before we went in. and. Um, there was no bleeding. There was 
slight cramping but when you're pregnant and because I had two kids anyways I knew that they, you know everything shifts and moves and it's discomfort I never had such painful pains where I thought something's wrong to walk in there and first of all see the baby before and know their heart was fine and then go the next time and see that it wasn't No matter how it happens, it kills a mother and a father or anyone. <laughs> it's not something I would ever wish on anyone. No matter how it happens, I just never would wish on anyone. From that point on, there was a really big ripple effect from it. That even when I told people later on I was fine, I wasn't. I blamed myself. I don't know why, because I know I'd done everything right. I was taking folic acid, I was taking multivitamins. It's swap well, blame because they were my body. The doctor told me to wait a week and I would be scheduled in anyways from that point for a procedure called a DNC. I couldn't bear the thought of going through it naturally or taking something to make it happen naturally. Because I, I don't know how I could handle that because I wasn't handling it already at all. And I won't go into that side of things because it's a bit too, it's a bit too much. So from this point on, I'm feeling all these things and trying to be a good mother to my two boys while still feeling so horrible. And try to be a good wife and a, try to be a good friend and try to be a good worker and a good person. And I just felt so empty. With all these bad feelings, it must have just caused everything because then there was stuff happening at work. There was fights between me and family members and I was down. I was really down and in such a dark place. And I could easily go and see someone be happy on the outside and just want to scream on the inside. So then other things started happening where there were money issues, there were work issues and trying to pay for things that just could not get paid right away and wanting to pay for trip. There's not seeing my family. And during that time that I went through with my family anyways, with Kai and the boys, because the boys didn't take it well, Corey didn't take it well at first, but he's an angel. Both my boys are such angels. I also had a lot of self-doubt, hated myself. I'm not the most confident girl as it is, I never have been, but I started gaining more weight again, and as <laughs> you can see in my face, I stopped wearing makeup, I start, stopped taking care of my skin. I washed, obviously. That puts you in a bad place when you can't even look at yourself in the mirror. I also applied to go to school and I was excited for that because it's like, right, new start, let's do this. I'm gonna get back on track and then just denied like that. I got my place, but I got denied being able to pay for it, which when they wanted the money and the amount was just not doable. So I was like, right, there you go again, having these great ideas and just gone. There's other things that right now, because they're really raw and especially to my family, it's very, very raw. That's what's just happened in my family. And it's pretty crap. I'm trying to be there for, especially my aunt. This thing has happened as well. And, and then the other day I just woke up and I was like, F this, F that. I said, I had enough. I am tired of feeling like this. I am tired. I just want things better and you know when I'm down although I try for my kids and for my family they can feel it and I don't want that anymore in regards to my angel that I've lost not only just me it really affected Kai really bad and he was really strong at first and he still is but I know that it killed him and that hurts because I you the people you love I that I love I hate seeing her. I hate going through hell. I hate seeing them struggle, especially when you don't know how to help. So I woke up and something just switched. I was like, today's gonna be a good day. And then from that, I was like, right, I'm getting stressed. No, now's gonna be a good day. Get over this hurdle, sit down and just think of the future and stop thinking of the past and grieve. Grieving is healthy and grieving is needed when people go through things like this, when people lose a family member, 
and when they lose their babies and when they lose their moms and their dads and their nans and their granddads, brothers, sisters, anything, even pets, it's okay to grieve. But instead of letting myself keep grieving, I need to pick myself back up. I need to dust myself off and that's what I'm doing. I sat down for the first time in ages, ages and start writing again, writing ideas for this channel. I looked up things because one thing I really want to do is go on video content at Disney because one thing that maybe you guys don't know but everyone that personally knows me is I am a huge Disney person. My room, my stuff <laughs> is Disney. So it's trying to work out when that's gonna happen and planning things and getting excited about life again and doing things with my kids and the moment I started thinking like that although we are going through a hard time like seeing my family how they are because of what's happened with, and with this loss I need to just make turn this life around at least for me and my family and have that up here to know it's there all these horrible feelings and this horrible stuff that has happened and be like right let's keep it there and keep going just keep on going and there's a lot of stuff in this book that I am actually finally after months and months and months excited to start doing and filming and sharing and having the kids involved more and, and on top of that I have also landed a second job which is going to massively help with the money side of things that we've been going through and it's crazy because once my mind flipped some other stuff started flipping. My creative juice start going, I'm all excited. So yeah, and we've worked out certain things that we didn't think we'd be able to work out. And we start looking at mortgages and deciding to save for a mortgage and going for things we want in life now. I do want to apologize for how deep this has gotten. I thought that I needed to address it at some point and I think it was more of a way to let myself let it out and speak it verbally everything that's happened and i think this is a way to close down because i couldn't get in front of the camera i couldn't i i didn't want to because of how i was feeling about myself and feeling inside and i can't speak when i'm about to break and i do love you too and i might be very small in here but i like filming and i like talking obviously and this is a really good outlet and i kind of feel a bit like okay now what's next but yeah i just wanted to come and talk to you share why i have been absent and why i've taken so long to come back and i hope this is okay i will be filming a new video next week the kids are off school i do have two jobs but i am making a point to make it once a week again and it will most likely come out on sunday but yeah that's it that's what's been happening if you have gone through a loss, no matter what it is, a pregnancy loss, infant loss, anyone in your family loss, don't hesitate to message me. I know I found it hard to talk fully and openly until a few weeks later because I found it hard, but I'm always here to listen. There is a really good organization that, although I didn't talk on it, I looked and after my miscarriage I read people's stories and I joined a Facebook group and just read people's stories. I don't know why, I just felt like I wasn't alone because there was a large point where I did think I was, but you aren't. And I will leave a link down below to that organization. I believe it's the Miscarriage Association. So yeah, that's it for me now. I'm back. <laughs> I am ready to share more content. Thank you for those who have stuck around and messaged me and asked if I'm alright and what's going on, why is there no videos coming out, <laughs> it was just ended and yeah, that means a lot for your support. Anyways, until next time, have a good one.